We need a second. I'll second. I'm going to call the roll. Trustee Katz? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Claver? Yes. My motion passed. The meeting is now closed to the public. Um, I am not, I am not going to spend the rest of my life while I'm sitting in this job, you know, with people badgering us at every meeting and badgering, badgering. I'm not going to entertain it. I'm not. I'm not. So, but I'm not going to entertain it. So, and we're going to do the best job we can. If I tell you something, you got my word on it. But we're not going to jump through the hoops. I mean, for people coming here stirring up trouble. I and mean, it's not going to happen. But, uh, amen. Okay. Um, I mean, as we announced, the water meter project is underway. We have approximately a 1,200 meters to replace. We've done about 90. About 90 has been done, so that's, that's almost 10%. And, um, you know, they'll continue to do that until, uh, until they're done. The next week's supposed to be some nice weather, so it's a good possibility that they'll go back to Route 3, you know, which is Old Burnham, and they'll be working in the alleys uh, probably. So, <coughs> excuse me. So however that goes, and you will be contacted, you'll be, and you'll be informed as to what we're doing. Um, probably the last meeting of, uh, of February, you know, I'll be making a recommendation to the board to fill the vacancies at the fire department. Our uh, fire chief retired uh, December the 1st. And, and, um, and last night we had an official energy efficient meeting at Burnham School that deal with um, um, safe homes and you know to help you to save money on your heating bills and utility bills and, and the rich of property of lead you know people that have young children and the lead is kind of detrimental could be detrimental mm -hmm. to the children so we put them on to uh, you know offer any protection and safety that we can for the residents of Burnham and particularly mm -hmm. the people that have small children or children that's in the growing stage development and these programs are basically free if you qualify for them. And as we go through this year, we'll have more and more meetings throughout the village. And we're going to try to get at least 400,000 <coughs> signed up this year. And we will be doing that you know, aggressively. I think at this time, we'll hear a report from Clerk Lewis. Good evening, Mary Lyon. One other thing before we go in. <coughs> this meeting here was brought to me today by Cabinet City Plumbing. And it came from the east side on Green Bay. In fact, on your block, Mr. Shea. And a contractor told me this meter is 50 or 60 years old. <coughs> and so we finally got it changed out. Okay, for speak, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I just need to make a correction that I made last meeting um, regarding the ethics statement the filing. It was actually for myself as the clerk to submit the list of um, individuals that need to file for the ethics statement. So that doesn't pertain to the board right now. That will come later. Okay, thank you, Chloe, for that information. And is that it? Yes. Thank you. Well, public education, health, safety, and welfare. Trustee Graham, please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Discussion of, consideration of, and taking action to approve or not approve on the following applicants to the Burnham Volunteer Fire Department, Maddie Jefferson mm -hmm. Kowski, upon pending successful completion <coughs> of a medical exam. <coughs> okay. We'd like for them to come to the next meeting and let the board want to table this the next time. You know, it's table. I make a motion to table disapproval or disapproval on the following applicants to the Burnham Volunteer Fire Department. Maddie Jabowski upon petty successful completion of a medical exam. And there's a motion on the floor by Trustee Riff to table this appointment. Uh, could we have a second, please? Second. Second by Trustee Garcia. Trustee Katz? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Clayton? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Okay. As you know, the census day is April the 1st. The census is very, very important for our community. We just cannot stress that enough. 
it's a valuable tool for improving um, improving <coughs> our community. If people in our community don't respond, we may not receive the funding needed in, in our <coughs> community. It is important that everyone understands the importance of the census. We need to count every child that is in the home. Uh, we, we need to count the grandmother lives there. This is a federally funded program. So we're not trying to get in your business. We just need, the census need a total count of the people in your house. <coughs> and um, make sure you'll be able to do it online. If you don't want people coming to your door, you could do it online. I believe it's just in the mail too. You could do it by mail. You could do it by mail. Uh, but if you do not, if, uh, if you do not do it in any of these, someone will come to your door. So again, it's April the 1st, and uh, we need a count. You don't have to be a registered voter, <coughs> but we just need a count of everyone that lives in your home. Be your grandmother, your auntie, your nephews, whoever's in your home. Uh, this is a private information. It's not going to go any further, <coughs> but that count is very, very important. And again, Census Day is April the 1st. And not something you remember that I like to add that the, the notice will be mailed out March 12th. March, uh, March 12th. Whatever calculations are going in, you know, for the total count, they'll be accurate. They'll be official for 10 years. For 10 years. So it'll be 10 years before we can correct this. So if we undercount ourselves now, then we got to suffer for 10 years in the fund. So that's very important. And not only that, they have jobs, many, many jobs. So whoever is interested in working for the census, um, you can apply online, and I have some um, information here for you that you can take with you. It's great pay. <coughs> it's flexible hours. So maybe you just want to work two days a week, or you can work five days a week. But um, there, you can apply online. And um, if they, if they see that they're interested in you, you will have to go through a background check and also fingerprinting. But this is a great opportunity for um, anyone that is interested in working on the census team also. Toyota has a recall on airbags because some of the airbags are not uh, inflated properly. There's a recall on certain models. 2011 to the 2019 Corolla, 2011 to an 2013, the Matrix, 2012 to the 2018 is the Avalon, and the Avalon Hybrid is also. Toyota says these airbags control the computer, and they may, they may not properly protect against electrical interference. And this can lead to, if you have an accident, your air, the airbags may mm -hmm. not open properly. So if you have a uh, Toyota, check with your dealership so that you can get this um, defect corrected. And as you know, uh, the trial for uh, President Trump is in his second week. <coughs> and um, as I stated at our, at our last meeting, I was explaining about the um, your old telephones. If you have old telephones, keep them charged up. Place one in the trunk of your car, one in the back seat of your car, or even hid, hidden in your home. Okay. And um, I keep it charged up because you can still call, in case of an emergency, you can still call 911. Mm -hmm. So keep your uh, old phones and then place them out throughout your home or in your car and so that in case of an emergency, you can still dial 911. Line dancing has continued. Our, we took a break for the um, for the month of December. We are back in full force. We started our uh, session back last Saturday. It was very successful. We will continue for the month of February. Our line dance will be February the 1st, the 8th, and the 22nd. <coughs> And I think, I believe that is all that I have. Okay, thank you, Trustee Griff, for that thank report and your information on public works and bill and trust the paper. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, public works has been doing general cleaning throughout the village and um, also
also getting the uh, equipment for the uh, upcoming spring season uh, all serviced and ready to go. We've been lucky that we didn't, we haven't had uh, a whole bunch of snow this winter. And uh, that's a blessing. Also, if anyone is in need uh, to get rid of old computer monitors or keyboards or uh, computer towers, Best Buy takes them and, and um, also staples, free of charge. Well, no, Best Buy charges $25 for the computer monitors, but staples, they take everything free. And um, also, Mr. Shea, I know of a few products you might could use for that uh, wildlife product. <laughs> I see them over here on State Street and everything. I've seen them around in the area. Yeah. Quite a bit, yes. Late at night, I was out the window and I see them. On State Street, you see them all the time. I mean, Ordinance Revolution Plan and Trusty Garcia. <laughs> Discussion of consideration of intention to approve or not approve the potential business license for Michelle White and Caria Randolph. Approval would, would also be contingent to have all the required documentation in order to have a business license in Burma and retirement in the state of Illinois. John, you can say it and just tell us what you have and do it yourself, what you plan to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And identify yourself. I'll let her speak first. Okay. <laughs> I'm Michelle White. Um, I'm 31 years of age. I obtained a bachelor's degree in occupational therapy and I also reside at Dyson um, as a claim analyst right now. And the reason that we are here today is to close our business time with you guys and let you guys know how it's. Can you speak up so everybody can hear you? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Stand over here. <laughs> okay. Right, okay. Stand over by the door. Right. Okay, that's fine. No problem. My name is Keishelle White. I'm 30 years of age. I obtained a bachelor's degree in applied science of occupational therapy and I also reside at Dyson as of right now uh, as the claims analyst. And the reason for our meeting today is to give our proposal and actually tell you guys why we believe our business plan will work in you guys' community. Okay. And my name is Saharia Randolph. I'm 32 years old. Uh, I have a master's degree in business management, and I am right now a senior operations manager for DICE. Um, as Michelle pointed out, the reason why we want to come and speak to everyone is because we want to give you guys our proposal on why it's beneficial to open up a before and after care service in your community. I'm sorry, guys, a bit nervous. Can <laughs> yeah. you explain in detail what it's about? Yeah. So that's um, so. If you guys would like to, we have. Would you like to get the proposal to the board members? Yes. 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 So I'll leave it out to ask if you can sign. Sorry. You can go ahead and be talking. Okay. <laughs> so just to give you guys a bit more information too. So our mission, our mission is to, pro to provide children with an educational, friendly, and safe environment while promoting yeah, teamwork. Uh, yeah, while promoting teamwork, uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. While promoting teamwork, leadership, and critical thinking skills, um, so we went ahead and took a look into the community that we we're looking to service, and we looked at that basically if there is a strong need for before and after care service for children, uh, most notably in the African American community. Um, so we went ahead and also looked at the demographics. So based off of the 2000 Census Bureau, from what we were able to pull, the community has about 54% African American, 34% Caucasian, 17% Latino or um, Hispanic descent, and 7% other races, along with a mixture of a few other races, right? Um, so if we take a look at the African American community, a lot of times the parents, they say that they want their children to be involved and after, after school programs, as well as before care. Mm -hmm. This helps to give the parent a peace of mind. I know I am a product of the after care and before um, care facility. So a little bit of background in regards to why we want to be more socially responsible and give children a better, um, better access is that one, I'm a foster child. And I was born um, under drug influence, right? But I was placed in a loving home. And my mother, she made sure that she put me in before and after care services, and that is what I believe helped to propel my um, 
We're so nervous you got that. <laughs> but, um, and look, I have meetings all the time, right? <laughs> but um, that's what helps to propel um, my my um, social skills, you know, and my my act, my um, ability to want to be able to learn more as well. So the advantages of a before and after care is that it does help to promote um, that social skill. It helps to improve those skills that a lot of us may not have, right? Um, it also helps to improve the grades. Kids want to learn more also, as long as they're in an environment that can help to teach them these different skills. And as Michelle pointed out, both of us, we're professionals, you know, and I'm a mother of three children as well, so three daughters. And with all the information I'm able to um, give to them and show them that basically you can do whatever you want to do in life, they're straight A students, so. <laughs> and as she pointed out as well, I am a mother of one son. Um, and a little bit of background on me. I am a person who, well, I am a child who grew up without a father. My mother's incarcerated, but I did not let my past determine my future. I didn't stop there. So I, my passion is supporting to other children what I have. Um, and by doing that, we also decided to give you guys a hazardous protection plan, how we're gonna keep the parents, well, the children safe. So while parents are away at work, school, or whatever it is that they're doing, they're absolutely sure that we're taking care of their children because that's something that I look for as well. Um, we are keeping our children safe as our number one priority. We uh, decided that we would do a routine check daily, a safety check basically. We will, safe, we will inspect the vehicles that we will be transferring children in daily, on a daily basis. We will also make sure there is no hazardous material around the facility where the children will be located when they are in our care. And we also will do safety checks for each outlet, making sure everything has covers on it so no one has to worry about that. Um, we also wanted to touch bases on transportation, on what us, what will set us apart from different maybe centers, because we're not daycare center, we're just before and after care. Um, what will set us apart is certain families, they want this service and they need to get certain places, but they don't have the extra income to actually pay for transportation. Um, so our, our contributing factor will basically be royalty pots will offer free transportation to all children and families that are enrolled in our program. Um, and transportation will be given during hours of operation. Our hours of operation so far, we're looking at 5 a.m. to 9 o'clock a.m. We're closed from the hours of 9 and 3. Picking back up during school hours from 3 to, five, three to 8, I'm sorry. And during this time, we also will have licensed and experienced drivers transporting children. At the moment, it will be me and Taharia <laughs> ourselves. Yeah, I have a question here. Uh, so, uh, do you have your uh, state license yet? Well, with this, that what we're doing for before and after care, you don't have to have a state license. We're doing the license exempt because we're carrying children under 30, uh, under 30 children, so we don't need a license exempt from child care for this. This is a license exempt. Uh, <coughs> I don't know. I have yes. a question. The what age we're targeting, are you targeting? We're targeting ages six to 12. Say that I'm sorry. I'm so sorry and, about uh, this. School I age children. I have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, but uh, did you incorporate yourself yet? Not as of yet. We wanted to speak with you guys and get your insight before we actually went on ahead and incorporated ourselves with them. Right. Have you, you have had any paperwork. experience in doing this before? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. <coughs> Yes. Do you have resumes as to your qualification? I don't have my resume only, but I mean, I'm just asking. Yeah. You know, you're asking yes. this yes. village board, mm -hmm. in essence, to uh, and, and, and don't get me wrong. I I, I don't want to discourage you. In fact, I think you got a really worthy cause here, but you have to cross your T's and dot your eyes, mm -hmm. and you know. This board is going to take a risk, give you a license, and you're telling me everybody else I know has to have a license, has to be certified. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you, you may have fallen an exemption I don't know anything about, but I'll learn. The point is, uh, put together your application with everything so that this board can examine it, and if they have any specific questions about it. We have to, we're giving a license to, uh, which I think is a noble area, I think, yeah. I'd rather see 
And I think this board would, and the community would rather see additional daycare places. I, I don't even know the location where you want to go. It doesn't even say it in here. So, I mean, you're asking the board to jump in the blind, is what I'm saying. It's got to be yes, more specific. Okay. And I have a suspicion, because the mayor just whispered in my good ear, <laughs> that if you want to go over in a strip mall, yeah. and anything over there uh, is better than what was there. In the 24 <coughs> 24 <laughs> We had one once there, but once before they did the same thing. I know we had one that was before and after. Well, that's and I, I think that's great. And it's by Wills, right? It was over by Wills. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry I cut uh, Trustee Barrow's. It looked like she was <coughs> anxious to ask a question. Oh, no, I was interested in what type of funding would you be depending on? Or would you be taking state, state uh, yes. for the funding? Yes. Okay. Well, what? So you said you all would be uh, working at the facility. But she has full time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so in a good thing is she's my <laughs> boss, so I'm the boss. So, <laughs> um, being a senior operations manager, I have a lot of flexibility and I'm um, actually able to be remote as well. So, that's something that's working out with being remote. And as you stated, uh, our hours of operations are from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. We're closed and then back up and running at 3 p.m. to um, 8 p.m. So, everything fluctuating do both. I uh, missed the laws have changed and they should be updated. But I, I, I do know that the number of children for a facility is by the square footage. So, how many children do you anticipate having in your facility? So, what, when we went down to the state, the child care, we are able to have, as long as it's less than 30, that's not because we're not a daycare center. We just a before and after care. This is not a center at all. So this is pretty much, we're picking children up with our certifications and getting licensed and everything for that, and we're taking them to their local school. And after school, after hours, they're able to come to our facility. We offer an extra homework assistance if needed. Um, we have access to electronic uh, computers, iPads, and printers, and anything in that area. So no more than 30. Yeah, no more than 30. Are you going to check and uh, mm -hmm. yes. being a friend? Yep. Yes. Well, I see, I'm going to make Which a recommendation to the board that we table this until the next meeting. Then maybe y'all can meet with the attorney. Maybe you can give you some pointers so we can kind of get this together. You know, okay. to be more direct and I think that would make the meeting the same way around. And okay. I'll also be with that. Okay. Okay. If you could remain after the meeting for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We need a motion. We don't need a motion. I need a motion to table the potential business license for Michelle White and Tahiria Rambo. Second. The motion was pulled by Trustee Garcia and the second by Trustee Cap. The clerk take the roll, please. Trustee Cap? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. Well, thank you. Motion passed. Do you have anything else, Trustee Garcia? No. Okay. Finance, Trustee Cap. You got a lot. Yeah, let's see. Start with discussion of consideration of and taking action on authorizing the payment of last month's bills and of the outstanding unpaid bills. Okay. So we have a motion on the by Trustee Cap. To authorize the payment of last month's bills and outstanding bills. So we have a second. 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 Trustee Richardson, will the take the roll? Trustee Cap? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. A motion passed. Proceed, Trustee Cap. Discussion of consideration of and taking action on the renewal of workman's comp insurance premium policy period of 1120 through 1121 of the IPRF Illinois Public Risk Fund for the total annual amount of $107,259 to 12 monthly payments of $8,938.25. Last year's annual premium was $94,327. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve the uh, uh, workman's comp insurance premium. 
And before we uh, proceed on that, like you said, $107,259. So the village of Burnham, <coughs> being a municipal government, have lots of expenses coming to attend to it. So we need a second on that. Take a roll. Trustee Capps? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Discussion of consideration of and taking action on the Village of Burnham insurance liability umbrella renewal, which totaled two hundred and thirty four thousand eight hundred and nine dollars, of which a deposit of forty five thousand four hundred and one dollars and eighty five cents was required at the time of the renewal, leaving the remaining balance of $193,774.80, which is placed on a commercial premium finance agreement that is financed <coughs> with the AFCO at a rate of 5% for a then monthly payment of $19,377.48 <coughs> and on the authorization of the village of the clerk of the village clerk to sign said insurance renewal agreement. Last year's premium was $230,626. Do I have to read all the companies involved in the umbrella? No, it's just there for information. Okay, that's just, okay, because it, it came up with the total. I think we'll make a motion to uh, approve the umbrella renewal. Which totals $234,809 and the uh, monthly payment $19,377.48. Okay, that was a motion approved by Trustee Cap to approve this insurance plan for $234,809. Uh, we need a second. Second. Let's let that go. Trustee Cabot? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claybrook? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Okay, Park and Recreation. Uh, uh, public Utilities, Trustee Richardson. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we have started uh, replacing the old water meters in District 1 and District 2. So far, a few residents that have had their meters changed have said it's been very quick, 15 to 30 minutes. And um, if you received a letter asking you to call in and schedule an appointment, we would appreciate it if you would do that. That'll help us to get the meters changed. If we need you all to let us know when it'll be good for you for us to come in and change them and you'll have to turn your water off while it's being changed. So it is in progress and um, it's coming to the other areas soon. Mine took 20 minutes, by the way, and I did call Kelsey Cummings and told him what a good job the guy did. His name was Rodney, and I know other residents have called too, so I wasn't the only one. But at least Rodney's had a few other compliments. Oh, you're probably going to raise any of that. <laughs> I think Mike probably said that's what he should be doing. But yeah. I mean, he was nice. He cleaned up after himself. He put little boobies on his, you know, boots to keep the floors clean. And, okay. and, uh, and I think the clerk has mentioned for the record that once we get, uh, you know, all these meals changed out and, you know, we'll be billing on a monthly basis. So, you know, on a monthly basis. So if we had to speculate, by summertime, I guess. I mean, that's just hypothetical, but we'll be doing it on a monthly basis, and um, it'll probably be a lot better. A lot better. The Park and Recreation, um, the Trustee Barnes, uh, she's not here, she's uh, not feeling well today. Uh, we're going to be installing a new uh, swing set uh, at the Todd Lot Park. park. 139th and Hartford, so that'll probably be in a couple months. It came in last fall, but uh, I instructed them not to install it because it was too late in the season. The kids were not going to get a uh, chance to enjoy it, so we have decided to wait until spring to do that. Uh, are there any presentation of petitions? Could we ask for a moment of silence for the um, 
from Ms. Darlene Hunter's family. Let me take this one. Because in the last two weeks, we had three residents from the east side that passed away. Okay. So, and I know all three, but Sandy Doe, which was less than a couple weeks ago, I'm sure she was in her 70s and lived in her berm pretty much her whole life. Darlene Hunter was probably also in her 70s and she lived in Burn her whole life. And Mrs. Bannock was 94 and she lived in Burnham for 70 years. Wow. So I'd like to maybe take a moment of silence for all three of them, the women that have been longtime residents. <coughs> Is there any unfinished business? Yes. And is there any new business? I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a motion on the floor by Trustee Garcia to adjourn. Can we have a second? Second. Will the clerk take the roll? Trustee Katz? Yes. Trustee Garcia? Yes. Trustee Greer? Yes. Trustee Richardson? Yes. Trustee Claypool? Yes. Our motion passed. Meet adjourned. Thanks for coming. You're welcome.